House to Home, brought to you by Remax Diamond Realty. Family compounds are the topic of this week's House to Home, and these are interesting topics because a lot of people use them, and yet not a lot of people really understand what they are. Very loosely defined, Liz and Gina from Remax Diamond Realty. Guam Hafade, welcome back. Thanks, Thanks for you. having us. Okay, let's first define exactly what a family compound is, because is it a piece of land that people have built multiple houses on? I've also heard people say that when different family members, cousins live in the same cul-de-sac if you're in a residential area, or it's just like my family, we have a single street and it's just two or three of my aunties and my grandparents' house happen to be on the same street. So exactly what is a family compound? Well, usually let's say property is given, let's say to you, your dad gave you a piece of property, but within that small subdivision of maybe five or eight lots, each of your siblings had a piece of property. I mean, that's one way, and, and then the family members start to build right within that, proper, within that area. Um, and then we've had situations where it's a big tract of land, everybody picks their spot, they build, but they didn't take the time to subdivide the property, so it's defined where your lot is versus your sister's. So what we're finding now is, if, for example, the lots were subdivided, and you have eight family members living in it, you're so comfortable with the way it's laid out, and sometimes they fence the whole compound, sometimes roads go one way to, to uh, service one house, but sometimes those roads that service that individual home is um, encroaching on one of the other properties. Mm -hmm. So after a number of years, it's just, everybody's comfortable about it until let's say one of the family members passes and then their child decides okay I'm living in the States I want to liquidate and then I want to sell the property and then you find out there's more complications that the lot itself the road that feeds to that property is not the actual easement so it'd be wise for people to look at the maps you know and if, if you're in a family compound now pull out your maps start looking to see what defines your property mm -hmm. and are you encroaching on one of the neighbors okay gina is this is the term family compound is that something that you in real estate just use or is this an actual legal term that you know heaven forbid it actually has to go to probate and everything they will wind up looking into uh, it's it's not a legal term in that sense it's more this is how lo, you know a lot of local families they they have they're lucky enough to have tracts of land as liz described where they can pass it on to their children. The problem is when they pass it on, I always say, I tell everybody, listen, real estate is an asset. It's an asset whether you're going to sell it and, and get recoup the money, or it's an asset that you could borrow against if you've got an emergency. Family compound or not, you should always look at it mm -hmm. and, and put it together as if it's an asset. So that, you know, you have to ask yourself, if I had an emergency, or if, you, you know, and of course we want to pass this on to our children or our relatives with the thinking uh, that they're going to hold it forever. Forever is a long time and mm -hmm. it's hard to keep forever. It's hard to keep that promise of holding it forever. Mm -hmm. Things happen, people change, their needs change. And so uh, my thing is, yes, it's a family compound, but before you build, define, define what it. each person is mm -hmm. going to own and do it legally. Don't just say, okay, from here to here, from that spot, you could build your house. Because when, when you have an emergency, when something comes up, you should be able to sell that asset as if it was all by itself. Even within a family structure, gentleman's agreement is, it isn't the preferred, work, preferred no, way. No. Okay. In fact, even in a compound like that, for example, if, if you wanted to get a loan and uh, you wanted to refinance your home, the bank will ask you, will have you get a survey, uh, will have you mark your points so they see that it's conforming with the laws. Uh, they'll also um, make sure that it's under your name. So there's a number of things they'll want to make sure before they give you that loan. So it has to be legal conforming that everything is in place. Your title is in your name, the deed of the property is in your name. Otherwise, it complicates it. Then, as Gina puts it, your asset is not an asset anymore it's more of a liability if you have to demolish part of the structure because it's sitting on somebody's property mm -hmm. what are some of the other opportunities or complications you know that can arise from having like a, fa a family piece of land that you've subdivided like maybe if, if you want to sell and everything like that can, can you actually use that as a selling well, point because some people might say oh cool that's a really nice house but you know 
I'll be the only member of the Salas family Living. in, you know, that, that, that's in a, a place where there's all these sablons. Mm -hmm. Nothing that there's, wrong, there's anything yeah. wrong with that. But, not, you know. not that there's anything wrong with that, but you're absolutely right. Then you're diminishing the value of your asset. Does that come up? frequently or? Yeah, it, okay. it does. I, I mean, you know, as long as, as the property was clearly defined in, in like I, I have a situation where I had some family members come and say, okay, this is our big tract of land and we are thinking about cutting it up. How do we do this so that we are really enhancing the value of our property? And there's actually a lot of things to think about when you're doing that. And, and that question to, well, if we create this so-called family compound, am I diminishing the value? Yeah, you could be because like I would be uncomfortable moving into the middle of a family compound. So when you clearly define the borders of each property, then, you know, when you're ready to spin it off, build a fence, put some hedges up, mm -hmm. do something so that some, you know, another person buying in doesn't feel so uncomfortable because you're absolutely right. That, that is, an, that is an issue that does come up. All right. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate that. <laughs> Certainly, this is an interesting issue. By the way, I would be happy to live with... Uh, I've got a lot of friends from the Sublime family, so I'd be happy to live among them. All right. <laughs> Do not let this be a Hatfields and the McCoy situation. So get educated. Call Liz and Gina at REMAX Diamond Realty Guam. Find out the information. And stay tuned because we're back after this. Thanks.